This is month one of the 2017-18 First Thursday Mystery. Before I start in on this month's blocks, I do want to mention that accuracy will be important this year because the blocks are different sizes. So for them to go all together successfully at the end of the year when we construct the quilt, they need to come out to the right size. So I have a separate video on YouTube that I made last year on accuracy. So there will be a link to it that you can go back and look at it. I'm not going to remake it. So this month, your kit contains 20 squares of fabric and five strips of fabric. The pattern doesn't mention it this year, but I would recommend that before cutting anything out, you go ahead and spray it with best press or sizing. You could also use starch if you chose. You don't want it to be sopping wet. You just want it to be damp and then press it dry. So I'm going to do it with these two squares. The rest I've done off camera. So we're just going to spray it. And then I'm going to take my iron and I'm going to press. Pressing is an up and down motion, not a back and forth motion. We will not be ironing this year. We will only be pressing when we're doing our blocks and when we are pressing at the beginning before we cut it out. Now, the reason to do this, there's a couple of reasons. One, it will make your fabric stiffer, so it's easier to handle, it's easier to be accurate if it's a little bit more stiff. And two, we have found in the past that sometimes the fabric will shrink when it has been sprayed and pressed. Since we're not pre-washing, I am not recommending that you pre-wash, these pieces are too small. Since we're not pre-washing, it will help take any of the shrinkage out when we are spraying it and pressing it dry. All 20 of our squares need to be trimmed down to two and a half inches square. I have four of them stacked up here and I'm going to cut four at a time. You do not have to do that if you don't want to. If that makes you nervous, then just stick to one at a time. So the first thing I'm going to do is put my ruler on here and I'm going to clean up two edges because these are not perfect squares. They are not cut to size for you. So I'm going to cut two sides. And this blade may be a little dull for four at a time. Okay, so once I have these two sides squared up, I need to cut the other two and I'm going to cut it down to the two and a half. I do not recommend that you pick up your pieces and turn them because that can get them out of square. So you can either walk around if you're in a spot where you can or you can turn your mat. Is what I'm going to do. Okay, so these are now the two sides I cut. I'm going to line up my two and a half inch mark on this edge and also down here. So I'm using a square ruler so it actually meets here in a corner. You don't have to use a square ruler. So I have the two and a half inch mark on this cut edge, two and a half inch mark on that cut edge, and I'm going to hold my ruler down, slice, and then I'm going to go across the other way. So I need to do that to all 20 of my squares, cut them down to two and a half inches. The next step after cutting all of your squares down to two and a half inches is to divide them into five groups of four because we're making four patches out of them. There's no right way to do it. This is scrappy, so just combine the ones you like. And then we're going to sew them together in a four patch. So to do that, we're going to sew this pair with an accurate quarter of an inch seam and then this pair also with a quarter of an inch seam and I will be chain piecing and chain piecing means I put this piece in, sew to the end, then feed this one in right after it, sew to the end. I'm not cutting my threads and I will do it with all of them. You can do just one four patch at a time if you want to. So this is what I mean by chain piecing. I've just sewn all my pieces together. It's one long chain. There's a couple reasons for chain piecing. First, it's faster, it saves thread, and for me it's also more accurate because I'm not stopping and starting at the beginning of each set of squares. Sometimes when you stop and start at the beginning of each one, you get a little swerve where you're coming in and off. But Since I'm feeding these in one right after another, I don't have that swerve. So the first thing I'm going to do after sewing these together is press the seam as sewn. This sets the seam. 
If you don't believe me, then try ripping out a seam that hasn't been set and a seam that has been, and you'll see there is a difference. So for each pair, I want to press my seams in opposite directions. So on this one, I could press it up, and this one I would press it down or towards this side. So to press, remember I pressed as sewn, and I'm going to just flip up the side that I'm pressing toward and kind of with my fingers straighten it out and then lightly run my iron along that seam I'm not ironing and then I'm just holding it to press it in place and then this one it's easier for me to press one way than the other so I'm flipping it around again I'm flipping it back tip of my iron and then holding to press so the reason for pressing the seams in opposite directions is that now when I go to sew them together, they are going to nest or they're gonna go in opposite directions. So when I'm sewing, they just kinda of go right together just like that. So I will go ahead and do that on all five sets of my squares. And I'm going to sew again a quarter of an inch away from my raw edge to make these into four patches. I've stitched my two patches together to make them into four patches and once again I chain pieced. I'm going to once again press as sewn to set the seam. Now is where things I'm going to change a little bit. I'm going to show you how to pop the center seam and the reason for doing this is to make that center stay nice and flat. So this is the last seam we've sewn so we're going to twist it on over that seam. So if I twist one way, nothing will happen. But if I twist the opposite direction, a couple stitches pop out right there in the center. See right there, so I can get a little tiny four patch. So when I open this up, there it is. Then I can press it and my seams will go in opposite directions when I press this rather than pressing them all to the same side. So you can feel it, but this side's gonna go pressed toward the blue, and over on the other side of the four patch, it's pressing toward the yellow. So when I flip it over, I have a little tiny four patch there in the center. So let me show you once more how to split that seam, and then if you need to, you can always rewind the video. So the last seam I stitched is right here. And if I press it, I mean, if I twist it one way, nothing happens. If I twist it the other way, and I'm twisting over the last seam I sewed, a couple stitches pop right there in the middle so that it goes four. It, I end up with a four patch in this one because that's what I'm making. If it had more pieces, then it would be more pieces in there. And then I'm going to press the seams the way they want to fall. So here are my five four patches. And if I wanted to say, if you have trouble popping that seam, sometimes it's because you got too short a stitch length, or if you backstitched, you will not be able to pop it. If that's the case, just press it to one side. Don't worry about it. At this point, these squares should be four and a half inches. If they're a lot smaller than that, you're probably going to need to take them apart and redo them. If they're a little bit bigger than that, you could always just take a sliver off of all four sides to trim them down to four and a half inches. From each of our strips in the kit, we need to cut two one and a half by four and a half and two one and a half by six and a half inch pieces. So I'm going to start by combining those measurements. So one and a half plus one and a half is three inches, and four and a half plus six and a half is 11 inches. So I'm going to clean up two sides on this. I want to make sure that I have at least three inches beyond where I'm cleaning it up. It's not a lot extra on the width. So I'm going to trim off one long side, and the long, end, long way I need to make sure there's 11 inches, and then trim off the short side so I have it squared up on two sides. So now I'm going to mark, match up my 3 inch mark with the long cut edge, and my 11 inch mark down here on the short cut edge. And I'm going to cut. Now 
Now I'm going to cut this strip in half this direction to get my one and a half inch strips. So I'm just going to move down, put my one and a half inch mark on here, and cut. If I'm real careful and don't move this, then this was 11 inches, so I need to either cut a six and a half or four and a half inch piece off of it. So I do like to, when I'm cutting from long strips and cutting more than one piece, I like to cut it as long as possible first, and then do the math to subtract out my pieces. So I'm gonna do the four and a half. So I'm gonna put the four and a half down here on my short, the short end, but I'm also going to make sure that I have lines lined up on my long end to keep the pieces, my cut straight. So by cutting my long strip, I'm moving back and cutting, and probably eventually you're gonna see me do that several times, I don't have to pick my fabric up. I have my strip, I move back and make my cut. And it, when I'm making multiple cuts, it's faster because I don't have to pick up the one I just cut and move it out of the way to make the next cut. It's also more accurate because I'm always taking my measurement off of my first cut edge. I'm not continuing to cut it. Because when I cut piece after piece, eventually my fabric starts to tilt like this and I have to go back and straighten it up. So that's why I do it that way. So I'm going to frame out my four patch with these pieces I just cut from the strip. So my two four and a half pieces go on opposite sides of my four patch. I will sew that with my quarter inch seam. I will press out toward this, but I will come back before I do that. I have sewn my uh, frame pieces on two sides of the four patch. I'm going to press the seams as sewn. And then I'm gonna ease these out. And I'm pressing, not ironing. Now this is not a back and forth motion. Ironing will stretch your fabric out of square. So then I'm gonna press the other side. And then I'm ready to add the final two strips on the other two sides. I've stitched my last two frame pieces onto my four patch. I'm going to press it just like I did in the last step. Press as sewn. And then I'm going to press away from the center or away from the four patch. When this is all pressed, it should be six and a half inches square. And you're going to just repeat these steps to make five four patch, frame four patches. I know I only have four. My fifth one is hanging on the sneak peek board at the store, but you need to have five. I do want to point out that the pattern you're getting this month actually has directions for two different blocks on it. We are only doing the ones on the left side of the page, but hang on to the pattern because you're not going to get a second copy. You're going to need the right side in a future month.